We are happy that you have joined us this evening for our Monday Thursday worship service. Now would you please join us in our call to worship. Jesus calls us to wash one another's feet and serve one another in love. We come to glorify the Holy One. Jesus invites us to eat and drink with him and remember him in all that we do. We come to the Feast of Joy. Jesus commands us to love one another and show the world that we are his disciples. We come to be the body of Christ and know ourselves as his disciples. Let us now sing together the first two verses of What Wondrous Love Is This? Let us now join together in the prayer of confession and pardon. Loving God, you call us to love one another and bear one another's burdens. But when we disagree with each other, we want to be right more than we want to follow you. You call us to serve one another and kneel at each other's feet in humility and grace. But when we are hurt by another, we want to strike back more than we want to forgive. You call us to pour out our lives for the healing of the world. Forgive us for acting as if your gifts were for us alone, when you gave up everything that all might be blessed through your sacrifice. God loves us and nourishes us, feeding us with the bread of compassion and filling our cups with an endless stream of grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Now let us join together in singing verses 3 and 4 of What Wondrous Love Is This.
This evening's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, starting with verse 3. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, not though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you, I know whom I have chosen, but it is to fulfill the scripture. The one who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. If I tell you this now, before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe that I am he. Very truly I tell you, whoever receives one whom I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore mentioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. Now no one at the table knew why he had said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, Buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. 
I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The disciples were undoubtedly shocked and amazed when Jesus took up the basin and the towel and began to wash their feet. He was their leader. He was their Lord. Foot washing is just not something they expected him to do. In the days of Jesus, foot washing was typically done by the servants of the household and it was not a glamorous job. People's feet get really dry and dirty, calloused and cracked when they walk around wearing sandals all the time. To wash someone's feet was an act of hospitality and care. It was also an act of servitude and humility. No wonder Simon Peter told Jesus, she will never wash my feet. Not Jesus, not his leader, not his Lord, not ever. Still there was Jesus with his wash basin and towel. He knelt in front of them one by one and washed their feet, calluses and all. When he was done, he told them why. I am setting an example for you, he said. You also should do what I have done for you. Now in that moment, I wonder if the disciples really understood what Jesus was saying. They had been hand selected by Jesus from the crowds. Jesus took them from their farms and their boat docks and he called them, and he gave them meaning to their lives. With Jesus, they were something special. They were part of the inner circle of a beloved spiritual leader. Jesus had elevated them to a position of honor. They were above the plow and the fishing net, or so it seemed. The disciples were special. And so this foot washing business did not make sense to them at all. Jesus, however, did not call them from the crowds of farmers and fishermen so that they would enjoy a greater status. Jesus called them to serve. Everything Jesus said and did with the disciples was to prepare for the day when they would need to carry on the ministry of Jesus without Jesus with them. Jesus was getting them ready to carry on his ministry of loving people after he departs. And we can almost hear the disciples asking, what in the world are we going to do? It reminds me of 35 years ago, giving birth to our son, Matt. After a long and hard labor, I was exhausted. I looked over to where the doctor was caring for Matt, and of course I had lost Greg's attention at that moment as he was hovering over Matt, consumed with joy in meeting his newborn son. I will never forget the look of love on Greg's face. And I also remember the moment that the doctor carried Matt over to me and placed him on my chest so I could get a good look at him. And she told me he was perfectly healthy. I'll also never forget the moment I looked into Matt's face. I had anticipated that moment for nine months and I was finally meeting my baby 
face to face. I was overwhelmed with joy and love. I remember thinking to myself, I have no idea how to do this. In fact, I'm scared of this little guy. I have a feeling some of you parents may have had that feeling too. And then I prayed, God, what in the world am I going to do? Please help me be a good mom. The response I heard, just love him. Just love him and all will be well. I was not able to have more children, and so eight years after Matt's birth, we adopted a beautiful little girl that we named Annie. When I picked Annie up, I remember the first time our eyes met. She was three and a half months old, and she was mesmerizing. Annie and I stayed in a hotel up the very first night before I took her home, and we laid on the bed staring at one another most of the night. Neither of us could sleep. I remember praying that same prayer again. God, what in the world am I going to do with this gorgeous child? And again, the response I heard, just love her. Just love her. Matt, Greg, and I quickly fell in love with Annie. A few months after taking her home, a lawsuit was filed against us from the birth father. And for 18 months, we went back and forth in the court system, fighting for custody of Annie. During those 18 months, I remember talking with a social worker, expressing my fear of losing Annie from our lives. I was already mourning the possibility and found myself asking God again, what in the world am I going to do? Again, I heard the same response I had heard before. Just love her. Just love her to pieces for the time that you have her. Being a mom is one of the greatest joys of my life, and yet I also had a healthy dose of anxiety and uncertainty mixed in. Being a mom to both of these amazing human beings is one of those moments where I ask God, what in the world am I going to do? And once again, the answer always came, just love them. I tell you this because I believe that is the message Jesus is trying to get across to his disciples. Just love them. Jesus was preparing them for the time when he would no longer be with them, and they would be the ones standing in front of the crowds of people, staring into the faces of people who are suffering from their own brokenness, longing to be made whole. The disciples without Jesus will have plenty of those what in the world are we going to do moments. And when they do, they will remember Jesus with his wash, basin, and towel. They will remember his example of how he expects them to treat other people. It's like he's saying, you see, it's simple. I'm sending you out into the world, into those crowds of people from whom I called you, and your job is to just love them. In the days and weeks and months that follow this worship service, you will undoubtedly have times when you see our beloved community, community of faith that you know and love look a little like its ideal self on its ideal day. And in those times, it will seem like we have the cleanest feet 
that we are the best clean-footed community of faith around. However, you will likely also see situations in which our feet will seem a little dirtier. Times when you see people around you who are sad and weary. Their spirits seem dry and cracked, calloused and worn. And it is in those times you may find yourself wondering, what in the world are we going to do to help them? And once again, the answer will come. Just love them. Just love them. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us sing together the hymn, Let Us Break Bread Together. On this Monday, Thursday evening, this is the time that we celebrate the sacrament of communion together in honor and remembrance of the night that Jesus was in the upper room with his friends. And so if you have not had opportunity yet, I invite you now to pause your video and to please collect your elements as together we prepare our hearts to celebrate the sacrament. Thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. From the earth you bring forth bread and create the fruit of the vine. You formed us in your image, delivered us from captivity, and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and gave us grapes as evidence of the promised land. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, 
you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. It was on the night in which he gave himself up for us that he took the bread and gave thanks to you, O God, and broke the bread and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave it to his disciples, and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come. gathered in our homes and upon these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. you to taste and see the goodness of our God. I invite you to take a piece of the bread of life or cracker of life, whatever you have chosen, and to dip it into the cup of salvation. Greg, would you please come forward? Greg, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Thanks be to God. And this is the cup of salvation Pour it out for you. Amen. Kathy, the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The cup of Christ's salvation poured out for you. Thanks be to God. My friends, as we prepare ourselves to continue this Holy Week by honoring Good Friday tomorrow, I invite you now to take a moment and to sit back, close your eyes, and listen to the beautiful words that Ibi Ojikutu will be singing for us as she sings, Were You There? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble. Tremble. 
us into Good Friday so beautifully. Let us now join together in our sending forth. Jesus said, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. May the God who is love fill us with love and compassion that everyone may know we are followers of Christ. Amen. Amen.